one zero live. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed that that quick break of the final session. Um, first of all, I want to say a huge thank you for ev to everybody, everybody who worked behind the scenes to, to put this together, all our friends from different organizations who really kind of put together the last two days and really made it an engaging, enjoyable experience. Of course, the uh, the, the team in at, RA at the Catholic University of Harare and all our wider team everywhere. Um, the closing session now will be a few words of thanks from all our friends who put this together. I'll try to touch on a few now and Robert can hopefully go on for a few more. But again, huge thank you to the Unicenter uh, for this on, Huawei Foundation, uh, the Dutch Postal Code Lottery, the Grameen Creative Lab, Unisocial Business, the Unisports Hub, Unis Environment Hub, YY Ventures, Glasgow Caledonian University, of course, Cathy University of Zimbabwe, um, Oxfam, FAO, People's Vaccine Alliance, and all the um, associates, managing directors, and everybody who dedicated their time and their, their weekend to really making this event what it is. Um, hopefully, Robert can, uh, can, can invite some of us and the speakers up to say a few words of thanks and, and kind of help us to, to figure out a way forward to, to, to from the event. So, Robert, over, over to you. We have a couple of closing speeches and I'll swiftly move on to invite uh, the speakers. Uh, our first uh, speaker uh, is uh, Mr. Jahangir Alam Chaudhry, Professor, Department of Finance, uh, Executive Director, Center for Microfinance and Development at the University of Dhaka. Thank you, Lavada uh, Kipo. Honorable Nobel laureate, Mr. Mahmoud respected guest speakers, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. Very good morning, afternoon, and good evening. I'm delighted to be part of this uh, wonderful, enlightening forum. This is the concluding session of our today uh, forum on East Africa. It has been wonderful and very learning for us as we have discussed many issues on social business and physios. This forum has also played a capacity building role for our East African partners, as they have learned how to run a successful social business, how to make their uh, uh, centers you know, financially viable and sustainable in the future. So uh, this, this has been a very good learning for them uh, from, uh, from the perspective of running a social business center. So we have had three, uh, nine plenary sessions and six parallel workshops on different issues ranging from entrepreneurship to social business to health, schools, and environment. Uh, and we had also uh, the discussion uh, issue on issues related to uh, creativity, microfinance, COVID-19 pandemic, social impact, capacity building in the academia um, as well. And since I'm from the academia, I would like to report uh, what we discussed in our academic session. We had two sessions, one uh, was plenary and another one was uh, parallel working session. In both sessions, we had two uh, groups of people. In one group, we had senior people from our network who run, who run uh, successful uh, YPCs. And as in, 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 the another, uh, in, in the other group, we, have, uh, we, we had uh, our partners from Africa and those who are going to start their uh, social business center or those who have just started their uh, in the social business centers. So in the first session, uh, the, the session that we had plenary, we had uh, two uh, very experienced uh, colleagues from our network. Um, uh, it, uh, so the first person was Professor Mark Shen, uh, who is from uh, National Central University in Taiwan, who runs one of the most successful uh, in the social business center in the network. And he discussed the issues like how to manage a YGC center and uh, how does he run it uh, and what is the uh, financial sustainability issue. Now he was mentioning that apart from uh, having training, um, teaching and research, they also provide consulting services to the government, especially to the local government agencies. And, and they have a regular uh, monthly meetings at the uh, municipality uh, city center, city city government office uh, on how to run a social business, and, and uh, they invite uh, uh, citizens, you know, uh, in the city, in the Taipei, um, sorry, in the Taiwan city, uh, to come to that meeting and to learn how to run uh, social businesses, and, and they help them to uh, to start such social businesses. 
Then we had Professor Carlos from University of Exanardo in Colombia, uh, who is uh, the research director of the university. Uh, he is currently uh, heading and giving leadership to four research programs under a project of uh, Inno Center. And he was discussing what were the research projects and what are the, the, the possible outcomes and how these research projects are going to benefit the uh, 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 social business uh, and network community. And, uh, uh, and it has been very, very, uh, very learning for the, our East African uh, friends as well as colleagues in the sense that Inno Center is also planning to run such similar research programs in East Africa. So we were requesting our African friends to come up with research proposals and ideas, which they, could, uh, they, they consider to be uh, very potential topics for doing research and, and which are going to help the, uh, our, our universities and our partners uh, in terms of the training and uh, teaching. And in the second uh, session, that which was a parallel uh, um, uh, session, um, uh, uh, we had Professor Faisha from AIT, National Institute of Technology, and we had Cam Donaldson from the Glasgow College of University. I, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with that Asian Institute of Technology is one of the top most uh, academic institutions in the world, and especially in Asia. Uh, you know, their institution, institute is regarded as an international organization in, in Thailand. So they have just started a master's program on social business and interpretation, which is very encouraging for all of us. We have been talking about this such a program for a quite long time. And they have finally have started uh, this program this year. And they are going to start taking students from uh, September uh, of this year. So he was mentioning what was the structure of the program, what are the courses that they are planning to uh, offer. And he was also talking about, you know, how does he run his, 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 his social business center? Because his center is also one of the most successful uh, in social business. So they have training programs, they have teaching, you know, offer courses. And they have also research program. And on top of that, he also, his center also does consultancy, provide consultancy service to international organizations like United Nations and uh, other, other, other organizations. So again, it has been a very wonderful uh, learning for our uh, African partners to, to know about how to run a, a social business. Because very often we, uh, uh, we have questions from our, our uh, partners that uh, how to make the institute uh, center sustainable financial sustainable. So these two, that means uh, uh, one center from Taiwan and, and center from the IT are the very good examples of making uh, initial service centers financial sustainable to make money and to make, you know, uh, make, make their centers financial sustainable. And we, so these are the, you know, uh, this, this is from the for part of our experience partners, you know, colleagues from successful in the social business centers. Then on the other hand, we had partners from African countries, those who have just started the you know, social business center or those who are planning to start their social center. So they were actually uh, learning from them uh, regarding the management issue, uh, how to run it and how to um, you know, um, make it, make the centers, position, you know, official center financial system. So this, that was like, you know, knowledge sharing, you know, uh, from uh, between these two groups of people. And, uh, Again, one thing is that uh, particularly the, uh, the African partners were talking about, you know, uh, how do they could, could be able to, you know, initiate courses, you know, uh, in, at their universities. And, and they were asking Fasha uh, about, you know, how could they get help from AIT. So uh, that issue was, was discussed, was mentioned by uh, Professor, uh, Professor Shah, and, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, initiate similar programs or similar master's program uh, in African countries that, you know, with the help of our partners in Africa. And one interesting thing that one of our colleagues from Africa uh, mentioned in, from Uganda that they have a, uh, they are planning or they have already started a master's program on social business innovation, which is an amazing thing. And uh, that uh, this is also a very good addition to our network. Hopefully other partners will, will be able to get help from them. And uh, we, we are looking forward how to uh, help them. So these two sessions, I'm sure, help our uh, partners in Africa uh, with respect to capacity building because we are thinking about, you know, doing research in Africa with, jointly with them. And we are also, we also did a training program for Africa countries, and we are planning to do similar training programs uh, for our partners in Africa. So this is what we are thinking from the uh, academia side. Apart from academia side, 
one interesting thing that I have uh, I came to learn from this uh, forum that before this program, I didn't know that there were socks made uh, from bamboo. I'm not sure how many are familiar with that, that there are socks which are made uh, from bamboo. So for the first time in life, I have heard about it. And I have decided that when I'll be in Ethiopia, I'll be visiting the factory of that you know, partner that we have in Ethiopia. And she has started a, a factory in Ethiopia and she exports uh, these socks to uh, advanced countries. So we are, and Professor Yunus is also looking forward to having a, at least one pair of these socks uh, in the future. So I'm also looking forward to have a, a pair of these socks uh, uh, very, very soon. So this has been a wonderful opportunity for us to exchange our ideas, experiences, and to learn from each other. And I have learned a lot because I know what are the uh, expectations of our um, um, our partners in Africa from because uh, as uh, in, in the capacity of the academic director of UNO Center, I'm actually uh, help this our partners to do research uh, projects uh, in, uh, in at their uh, universities. So I'll be uh, also working with our, our African partners in Africa to do our research projects. So hopefully we'll be able to come up with some good research projects and which will enable us to uh, enhance our um, you know, knowledge base on social business and help our uh, you know, social business centers with respect to teaching and uh, learning. So thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, to all of you for joining and, and helping us to learn. And I'm, I'm delighted to, I've been delighted to be part of this uh, forum and I'm looking forward to be part of such a program in the future uh, because I understand this is very uh, enjoyable as well as this is very uh, learning. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Professor Yunus, you know, for you know giving all of us the opportunity to talk about the issues which are very important to this world, uh, especially uh, during the time of uh, COVID pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jahangir, for your remarks. Uh, we we'll move to our next speaker. Uh, I'm going to invite Monica Moreriwa, Director, Public Relations and Marketing uh, from the Catholic University of Zimbabwe. Welcome, Monica. I think she's on mute. They have to unmute it. You are on mute. Please unmute your mic. Sorted, that's all right. Thank you. Um, first of all, on behalf of the Catholic University of Zimbabwe, would like to thank the UNIS Center, the UNIS family of organizations for the great work you did to put this East and Southern Africa Social Business Forum for Youth Empowerment together in association with us. We are really privileged to have been your partner of choice to host this successful workshop. We all appreciate and understand the need to focus on achieving zero poverty, zero unemployment, and zero net carbon emissions. One of the questions we will continue to reflect on is for how long will Africa or African countries continue to be referred to as developing countries? As we reflect, one of the realities we have to face up to is that if you and I do not start to be committed to address this, we will continue to be referred to as developing countries. Let us own our context. We are going to own our context, our environment, and respond to the challenges and the opportunities together. We have learned that the opportunities in Africa are in abundance. And we really look forward to the collaborations, the cooperation that we will engage in to ensure that we realize these opportunities for the benefit of not only the 1.4 billion people in Africa, but indeed the global impact. Because we said we are going to work together and that we are moving together forward, supporting each other, leaving no one behind. We also learned that the message is more about collaboration, cooperation, more than competition, a collective human effort to make a difference. And throughout the tone has also been around good governance. That good governance is key for us in Africa 
and indeed globally. We also learned about compassion, that social business is driven by compassion. And we have learned that during this COVID pandemic, we have become more compassionate and we want to take it forward so that we respond to the challenges and the issues that are in our community and in our environment. And that social business is a key part of responding to this compassionately and sustainably. So we will be part of the future by embracing the current and studying the challenges and issues as well as the opportunities. We also learned that digital by nature is cheap and it has scope um, for scaling and presents many opportunities. And we are very happy because we've got a very robust business management and information technology degree program. And we have seen the impact of our students in the market and we will continue to support them. So we look forward to building a vibrant social business center at the Catholic University of Zimbabwe, together with the networks that we form today and the support that we will continue to give each other. In the morning, we shared a design framework, starting with reviewing what is available, engaging stakeholders, moving on to focusing on the context, creating an enabling culture and building on collaboration and cooperation. We will then move on into building the social business model and the business canvas guided by our environment. The final stage will be to implement and to finance the social business center. We learned that we need finance to support it. And through our networks, we look forward to meaningful support and establishment of the social business center. These two days, we must say, have been engaging, enlightening, and really forward looking for us. We thank you, Professor Yunus and your team from across the globe, the organizations that have been mentioned. Specifically, we've been dealing with Lamia, with Dominique, with Zinat, with Monica, with Sadia, with Aziz, with Robert and the whole team. We are really grateful for opening the doors and reaching out to us and for this very fruitful engagement. We thank all the guests who are able to attend physically and of course, those who attended virtually. Uh, we thank our Catholic University of Zimbabwe Vice Chancellor, Professor Rangaz Nyemba, the staff and students who have been with us. It has been a life-changing experience for us. Very worthwhile two days. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, we'll move on to our third uh, speaker, and uh, I'm going to invite uh, Yannick Turner, who's the President and Managing Director, Kigali Foreign Affairs Council. Yannick, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, for some reason, my light just went off <laughs> when we started speaking. Anyway, it is, uh, it is great to be here, and I want to say thank you very much to Professor Yunus for this fantastic conference. I had a chance yesterday uh, to suspend a few uh, sections. It, it, is, it, is, it is amazing the conversation we're having, and we really need to have more this conversation here in Africa, in our communities, because um, I was just speaking yesterday to the, the Canadian Parliament. I was telling them, you know, uh, the conversation they're having about Africa in the Western countries has really to change because Africa is the future and Africa is where everybody should be. So it is great to see uh, having uh, this conversation here in Africa on the continent, especially in East Africa. I don't want to take much. I'm going to, I want to mention two or three points because uh, I know the speaker's coming after me. And I really want to specifically address the young people, the young entrepreneurs who are attending uh, the, the conference today. It, you know, it's, it has been always may, in many society when there's problems and challenges, we always intend to push uh, solutions to others. You know, the mayor's program, this is the mayor's problem. This is, uh, you know, the foreign partners or aid countries to help us, you know, solve these issues. But we never put our center, ourselves in the middle of the problems and try to find the solution, be the one leading the solution, uh, find, find the solution. And it's always interesting you know, how young people who are the majority of our continents, 75% uh, of the population under 35 years here, uh, we have been left behind when they're having conversation on resolving challenges we have in our community. So a conference like this is very important because it's including us 
uh, young people on the continent in the conversation and how we could drive uh, 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 the change and finding solution. So I want to talk about something interesting. I find interesting. You know, when you look people we have in our societies, heroes in our communities, uh, you could look, you know, Dr. Uh, uh, Nelson Mandela in South Africa, Dr. King, uh, and the other, you know, uh, Gandhi in India. There are always people who are normal, like everybody. But uh, what made them different than the rest of the site of the generation is they made a choice. And that choice changed lives in their community. So what I want to tell to the young people who are attending to the young entrepreneurs today is you could be our next Nelson Mandela. You could be our next Dr. King. You could be our next hero of a society or a community. And you don't have to be in politics. You know, most times like, oh, I gotta, I gotta run for the mayor or, or the member of the parliament to make a difference. You don't. From your side of entrepreneurship, you could really change uh, our communities. And there's so many examples of entrepreneurs who have been changing lives on this continent. And you could be our next one. We see um, for the last 10, 15 years, with technology integration in our community in Africa, with more young people exposed to sharing information. We're seeing a trend of young people taking a lead. And I want to encourage uh, 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 the participant today to take the tools and what we learned from the conversation yesterday and today to really drive this uh, home and drive and looking around what can we do. You know, people always ask me, you know, I'm telling, you know, speaking to different young people on the continent, like, well, what can I do? You know, I don't have PhD, you know, like Professor Muhammad Yunus, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have money, like, you know, Bill Gates, what can I do? But it's always interesting because it's never about, it's never about uh, how much you have. It's about, are you willing to make that choice and use the small you have to make that difference? You know, Nelson Mandela could have been sit, you know, suffering like every black person in South Africa, but he said, no, I got to end to this. I got to do something about it. It wasn't because he was strong. Well, that the heroes also because they are stronger than the, the, the rest of the, the society and generation. It's like they made that choice with little they have and they made impact and difference in our community. And today they are the heroes in our society. So there is so many opportunities when it comes to entrepreneurship in Africa and East Africa. It is a matter of use what you have. Look around you. You don't have to go far. And it is okay to fail. You know, I know we have this culture, most of us failing is bad, but failing is one of the way to learn, you know. And it's okay to fail. It is okay to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. I want to finish with two interesting examples. Uh, I met this young girl in Rwanda almost 10 years ago, and she started this uh, uh, a startup company called Hey Hey. And I was very impressed and amazing by her story because she didn't come from a background of business. She didn't come from a very entrepreneurial family. She was a, a young girl who see challenges around us in our community and said, I want to do something about it. The problem was we have so many farmers who didn't know where to turn when they're looking for information, when they're looking to learn. And she decided to create a, 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 a technology, an app where you could text SMS to uh, this app asking about, uh, ask about, about, your, your, about your farm, farms agriculture questions you have, and they will send you advice or information coming from the government or coming from other sources. And this has really helped change the farmers in terms of knowledge and knowing, because most of our farmers are still doing traditional farming. And this is, was in a way to solve an issue that she saw, and that made a big difference, and that had an impact on a society here in Rwanda. Another good example is the famous one, Zipline. Zipline, which is a drone company that help deliver blood to uh, different countries in Africa, now in Rwanda, going to Nigeria and Ghana. It's a very interesting concept. You know, we used to take you know, you know, three, four hours to deliver blood from one hospital to another hospital, from a center to another center. You know, these young people saw so we could do something about this. We could use technology and the tools we have around us to really change this. And now we used to take three hours to deliver blood. It takes, you know, 20 minutes using a drone to deliver blood. So what I'm just saying is this. It's not, a, it's, it's not about having a PhD or master's. It's about looking what you have around you and use that and starting now, not tomorrow. And as young entrepreneurs, I think we're the one with the tools to change our continent and our community. 
You know, we don't need foreign aid. I strongly believe foreign aid is not a solution to our problems, but entrepreneurship, social uh, business, it is what our continent need. And the tools and the power to do this is with the uh, young people and the entrepreneurs who make 75% who make 75 of our community, our continent. Uh, so I want to encourage all young entrepreneurs, please go back home, use the tools, connection, and what you learn from here, connect to the community, and let's not just end the conversation and continue as we move forward. But thank you very much, and I'm so glad to be joining you today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yannick, uh, for your encouraging news to the African youth. Uh, I'll swiftly move on to our fourth speaker. I'm going to invite uh, Saskia Bryston, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Unisocial Business. Hello, everyone, um, and thanks so much. Uh, my name is Saskia Broyson. I'm one of the, the co-founders um, of Uno Social Business. Um, and uh, yeah, wow, those were inspiring words. Uh, Yannick, thank you very much. It's fantastic to see uh, what's happening in Rwanda already um, and the work that you've been doing uh, there over the last many years to really uh, create such a, a beautiful, a glowing example um, in in Rwanda. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, the, the question is a little bit like, what are really the next steps and how do we make all this fantastic discussion over the last uh, two days really very, very concrete? Um, and of course, some of you um, in the room may have asked yourself, uh, well, so what do I do next? I've learned so much, I've had so much inspiration, and how do I actually get started? Um, and we at Uno Social Business um, obviously have two sides that we work on. Um, one side is that we actually provide financing to social business entrepreneurs and also help uh, support them. And on the other hand, we also work with corporations, but I won't focus on that side right now. Um, but just focusing on the investment side, um, as some of you may be aware, we actually have local offices um, in Uganda and in Kenya, um, so based out of Kampala and Nairobi, um, and led by two fantastic um, country directors, uh, Richard and Susan, that some of you may have been seeing in, in one of the panels um, that we were hosting yesterday. Um, and these two fantastic uh, invest, investment professionals um, are really the ones for you to reach out to if you are young social business entrepreneurs um, in East Africa and actually feel that you're now ready after you know starting your businesses a little bit and showing how these businesses can solve social or environmental problems locally, that perhaps now is the time that you actually would like to have some investment um, and want to grow um, your company. And as I had mentioned already at the beginning, I'm trying to be super concrete, so it makes it sort of logical for everyone here. Um, we provide loans, so we provide loans to people between around 100,000 and all the way up to $500,000. Um, I don't have the numbers handy now, what that means in Ugandan, uh, Ugandan and Kenyan shillings, but uh, you, you made you know, the, um, the conversion yourself. Um, and um, next to those long-term patient loans, we also actually provide um, uh, the entrepreneurs with support to professionalize their companies, to do their impact measurement better, to help them find new clients, et cetera, et cetera. So um, in other words, uh, that's what we can help with. Um, for companies that are not yet ready to take investment, we also do what we call investment readiness programs. Um, we just um, finished one uh, earlier in the year in Kenya and, and are planning others in Uganda and Kenya uh, um, still this year. So um, please uh, check out our website, unosocialbusiness.com. Um, and there you can also look at the country websites in Uganda and Kenya and actually check when those kind of investment readiness programs happen or just contact us through our website. To make it very concrete, that's a way for you to access financing if that's interesting for you. We're planning um, in this next year to invest around um, uh, 10 million um, across our different offices, which would mean something like two to three million um, in Kenya and Uganda. Um, so there's some money available um, and we hope that we'll find great entrepreneurs. So I think that's that's one of the concrete things that I can offer um, and to make it, uh, yeah, to, to offer concrete next steps for some of the fantastic entrepreneurs that have been uh, listening in. Um, perhaps there are also a couple of larger corporations or big companies here that um, are asking themselves, well, I'm a normal business, but I find the social business appealing, but I don't really know how to do this or how to get started. 
Um, we also do a lot of, at Uno Social Business, we also do a lot of work with helping large, uh, either large family companies or um, particularly corporations to create social businesses on the side. Um, so saying uh, you're a normal business so far and you, I don't know, sell whatever it may be that you sell. Why don't you use your core competences to also create a social business and to solve problems um, through your the, the things that you actually know, the core competences that you actually know? Um, so if that's something you're interested in, um, do reach out to us as well, um, and um, we can help you with that. Um, I see that there's lots of potential for large companies also in uh, the East African region um, to do more. Um, I feel that the whole area of, let's say, CSR or corporate philanthropy is still very much at the beginning, and we say, forget about CSR and corporate philanthropy right away, go into social business. And um, so that's that's another way for people um, to get concretely involved and just reach out to us uh, to see um, how we can perhaps do this together. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to, um, about what I've heard here over the last couple of days. Uh, there's lots of energy um, in East Africa and across the whole African continent. Um, and uh, I fully agree with uh, Yannick before me, obviously Africa is the future. Um, and so let's define the future by also the future of business, not using the old type of business, but using the new type of business. Um, and, and that is business to solve problems rather than business to create problems, which I think we've all done enough over the last many centuries. So thanks so much, everyone. I'll leave it at that. Just wanted to be very concrete and, and looking forward. And I'm, I'm super excited if, if uh, some of you may want to reach out. Again, website is unosocialbusiness.com. And um, you can happily reach out to us if, if you would like to proceed with your entrepreneurship. Looking forward. Bye. I'll hand over back to uh, the moderator. Thank you, Saskia. I really enjoyed your session yesterday. Uh, now I'm going uh, to invite uh, Hans Reis, who is the co-founder of Grameen Creative Lab. Hans, welcome. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, the last two days was uh, the step from the last 100 days. So we start the journey uh, 100 days ago. We start the journey more earlier when Professor Yunus and uh, the Yunus Center with all the different departures, the Grameen Creative Lab as a thought of the Yunus Social Business, just listen to Saskia, the Yunus Environment Hub, the Yunus Sports Hub. We all are here with the same spirit where Professor Yunus saying, let's have a focus for the next two years on the East African stuff. Let's put all our energies together. Let's be completely aligned and say, we are here to focus on Africa and on East Africa. When we started the journeys, of course, it's always magic to start with Africa. You know, Africa means so much for us in the world and there's so many uh, wonderful stories. And we just listen to some of them. Uh, one of them, what I always uh, remind is, uh, uh, is Bangari Matai. When we look backwards to her life, to her achievement in Kenya, uh, we see once the future of Africa is female. The future of Africa is women who have minimum 51% of the solution in their hands. So if we come with now with the Grameen family and with the universal business family and with all this stuff, with all our focus to Africa, then we are here to say, hey, come on, bring, let's meet and don't forget to bring all your problems. Together, we are surely we can find for anything our solutions. The problem solver and the idea behind of the Brahmin family is yes, yeah, the problem, we solve it. How big, how small it is, let's do it. And uh, in this journey now on East Africa, and it will keep on going, of course, for the next years. I'm really excited to learn all the problems, thinkers, and the creative aspects what we saw in the last two days. It doesn't matter it's a, it's a creative industry or it's a creative economic sector, but it is about creativity. And uh, we are widely to invite you, all of us, every single uh, chapter of the Grameen family, of the Yunus family, to be part of us and to share with your ideas and with your needs what you have. One thing that was particularly touching me a lot in the last two days was Vanessa Carey on her speech when she saw the actual pandemic, the actual aspect of the world, when she says, some says of us, this is the biggest crisis than the Second World War. She said, it's much more bolder. 
And the professor Yunus Pitcher in the very beginning said to be on the boats and people all uh, in the high water. And it's not only about getting this money on the boats, getting even with the higher beta on the boats. And to see the sense of urgency where we are in. It's all of us to see how we can give the best of me in a we. And the best me of a we is selfless. It's not about me. It's not about my organization. It's not about us. It's about really see the sense of urgency where we are. And I'm so thankful for Professor Yunus to uh, push us mm. in the direction of selflessness, to push us in a way to see the bolder pictures and remind us solutions are, the only solutions are what we have. At minimum, 51% is female. Let's shape a future where we have an equal dignity if every beings use the power of creativity, entrepreneurship, Souls it and sees a sense of urgency where we are in. And the future is definitely more than African, is the youth in Africa. Thanks a lot to be part of this. And I'm really looking forward uh, to learn more about your great culture. We all talk about digitalization. We need more the, biolog the biologizations. We have an interface between human and nature. That's what we have to redesign. And without Africa, this is impossible. Looking forward to shape it, we keep it why why and we do it with joy. And uh, I say good luck to all of you and hope you stay healthy. Thank you, Hans. Uh, I now hand you back over to Daniel, who will take you through the rest of the speakers. Thank you. Over to you, thank you. Daniel. Thank you so much, Robert, and thank you so much to our speakers there. Um, up next, I'd like to invite Marcella Villarreal. Marcella is the Director of Partnerships for F the Partnership Division at FAO. So Marcella, maybe a few words from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Daniel. And thank you very much, Professor Yunus and all the Yunus family for these very, very inspiring two days. Let me start with the three zeros that uh, have been the late motif of the days. Uh, so zero, net carbon emissions, zero wealth concentration, and zero unemployment. And actually, I would like to add another zero that is central to us and our mandate at FAO and the United Nations, uh, which is zero hunger. Of course, they are very closely interlinked. And in fact, I would add that achieving the three zeros would uh, take us a very long way also to zero hunger. Hunger uh, has been increasing uh, recently, in the last four years, after decades of decrease, and uh, we have reached uh, more than 690 million people worldwide suffering chronic hunger every day, uh, and that was even before COVID. Uh, with COVID, just last year, FAO calculates that at least 100 million people additionally, probably 130 million additional people, are suffering hunger in a chronic way. Now, why is it that hunger has been increasing in the last few years? Well, of course, climate change, um, economic downturn, like uh, with uh, COVID, and there you go with the three zeros. Uh, and in addition, very importantly, due to conflict and armed conflict. And there we go with another aspect of the zero hunger equation that is very central indeed. So because of this, FAO launched the FAO Nobel Peace Laureates Alliance for Food Security and Peace back in 2016. And I am really happy that Professor Yunus was one of the founding members of this alliance. This alliance uh, has uh, its uh, project. Uh, first project is in the Central African Republic, uh, Mount Carmel project. Uh, where, you know, we have one of the world's most serious humanitarian crises uh, right now. And uh, this profit project was referenced yesterday by, by the minister. We're working directly with several hundred uh, beneficiaries. We have two main components. One of them is around constructing livelihoods, uh, which are mainly are agricultural, of course, rural uh, livelihoods. And this is in partnerships uh, with uh, Professor Yunus and the Yunus Foundation. Uh, in this sense, the project is building capacities, training youth to help create the opportunities and the possibilities for them developing their own social business activity and also improve soft skills that are important to and specifically to successfully 
present their social businesses proposals to customers, community, and also to investors. The intervention is also going to help organize mentoring and training sessions for youth groups to be able to help them create cooperatives in agribusiness activities that can be operated as a social business owned by the community to increase income opportunities for smallholders. So that's one main aspect of this project in Central African Republic. The other main aspect is together with Tawakul Korman, also a Nobel Peace Laureate from Yemen, and also a founding member of our alliance. Um, and this component is about training youth in non-theological and technical skills to create a thriving network of key communicators that can disseminate messages pertaining to peace building, social cohesion, conflict re resolution, of course, and very importantly, women's role in promoting peace, coexistence between religions and cultures. I would like to say that arriving at zero is possible. Zero, the three zeros plus zero hunger. It's possible, but it won't be possible if we don't take into account certain elements. And these are elements that have been coming up again and again uh, in these past uh, two, two days. Very importantly, of course, voice to women, women's empowerment, women's economic empowerment is at the core of any development intervention in the world. Uh, without women, more than half of the population, it's impossible for us to reach any, any goal. Um, and more specifically, uh, without their participation, we will just be losing out. And of course, we all know that the sustainable development agenda uh, is about leaving no one behind. Of course, <laughs> leaving half of the population behind does make, doesn't make any sense. Now, um, the uh, importance of credit came up again and again. And centrally, it's very important for women to be able to have access to credit, um, which is not always possible. Actually, it's very, very difficult as has been discussed. However, credit is a main issue, but there's other issues like, for example, land. Uh, women usually don't have land to provide as collateral for credit. And uh, around the world, our FAO numbers show that uh, more or less 19% only, around the world, I'm talking North and South, so only 19% of land titles belong to women. And this, is without counting the size of land, which is usually bigger when it's men, and the quality of that land, which is also usually better when it's men's. So access to land is fundamental, but also access to all of the other productive resources necessary for agriculture, including information, credit, of course, I also, I already mentioned, but information, digitalization, um, uh, knowledge networks are all fundamental to be able to create equal opportunity in the rural areas. And we have a study where we calculated that if we were to give rural women the same access, same, not more, that men already have in their own rural areas, just by that increased access to resources, the number of hungry people in the world could be reduced by at least 100 million. It's a fantastic power there. And yet this is most of the time not present in policies. The other important point, and this is something that Professor Yunus also keeps reminding us all the time, emphasize rural areas. Urban areas are not the end engine of the economy, as Professor Yunus uh, tells us. We shouldn't be looking, as he says, to rural areas as a supplier of labor and food only. If we really want to have development that is able to change the world in a positive way, to be more sustainable, to look at uh, emissions, to look at employment, we look, we need to focus on rural areas and rural development and rural dwellers empowerment and of course, women's empowerment. So, and this is not always the case. We saw in the Millennium Development Goals, development agenda from 2000 to 2015, there was not a single mention of rural areas, not one. There was nothing around rural areas. It was as if that agenda was looking into 
urban possibilities for development, get into industrial and urban opportunities, uh, forget about rural to be developed. Today, we have a much better agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals agenda, where rural areas are very, very present. But if governments don't put their will into rural areas, we will not be able to change the world. We will not be able to address massive issues like, for example, land grabbing, which is big and growing in many countries of the world. Important, reduce inequality. Inequality uh, has been growing much faster than any other issue in development. And actually, while the world has been able to reduce poverty and actually significantly, if you look back from the 60s to today, but inequality has been increasing within the countries, between countries, worldwide. Even while poverty is reducing, inequality is increasing. And this should make us think also about that zero that has to do with the zero wealth concentration is very important. And I'd like to conclude by just reiterating uh, what I saw in the video, and I really like this video. Nothing is impossible. Really, nothing is impossible. We can reach all of these zeros, including zero hunger, of course, uh, which is fundamental for us. We can, we can reach zero, all these zeros, if there's the will. And the time is now. So thank you so much, Professor Yunus and all of your team, uh, not only for inspiring us at FAO, but leading us to think in a better world and leading young people, especially, to develop their potential, give us the ideas, because the good ideas will come, are coming, and definitely will come more and more from young people. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you okay. so much, Marcela. Thank you so much for those insights. Um, up next, I'd like to invite Professor R. N. Zinyemba, the Rector and Vice-Chancellor of the Catholic University of Zimbabwe, to give us a few closing words. Good evening. It's evening in Harare now. Um, good morning or afternoon in other parts of the globe. And um, I think it's probably night elsewhere. In this concluding session of our workshop, I'll just touch on five quick points. The first one is to advise that workshop, parallel workshop number six which was in person here in Arare, was looking at developing a vibrant social business center in a university, let's say in an African university. And as the pioneer uni business, social business center in Africa, Catholic University of Zimbabwe, has had quite a lot of thinking about this. And we developed as my colleague Monica described to you, certain principles that we think are generic enough to be extrapolated in the African context. Of course, they can be extrapolated in other contexts as well. Um, and I'm glad to see that there are other universities which have a longer tradition of this uh, than ourselves who are just beginning. And we do hope to learn from them. So within that context, the generic principles that we developed, which Monica described, and I won't go into the details for them, we see ourselves as moving to another level now. And that level um, is really defined by a formula which reads form follows function. Before we firm up the actual form that we are going to take, we want to define our functions. What are we going to do within the university and in the community? I'm glad to let you all know that some of the points that were raised by speakers in this session, um, for instance, Hans 
was talking about the future of Africa lying with women. To report that 90% of our attendees in Harare, the in-person are women. So Hans, 51% that you mentioned is really nothing <laughs> when we look at what we have here. And I want also to let you know that these young women have great ideas in terms of social entrepreneurship. They are all involved in one way or another in social entrepreneurship, either ongoing and they are looking at scaling that up or they've got ideas to start. And we want to use the Catholic University of Zimbabwe as a hub for all of us in Zimbabwe so that we have programs not only in the university, but in the community as well. Some of them will develop enough momentum on their own with perhaps our help and I would want um, Unis Center to assist them uh, in developing these. So that's the next thing that we are going to do. We are going to use a very simple formula in the way we are going to work. It's called the GMR formula, goals, methods, resources. We have been defining our goals. We want to then go on to decide what methods we are going to use. Then we'll come to the resources that are necessary for us to meet those methods. And um, Saskia, I I'm very glad that you were very open about what's available in terms of resources. We don't want to start from resources ourselves. We want to be able to dream, to say what are our goals without being limited and confined by resources. Quite often we tie our hands and say, I can't do this because I'm a poor person or I don't have the energy. We want to dream first, define our methods. And then when we get to resources, we will look at what we have locally and where we need assistance, like the 10 million that Saskia, you talked about, we will be asking for some of that in Zimbabwe. You mentioned where 2 million is, 3 million is, well, in Zimbabwe, we'll be asking for some of that. The other point that I thought I should make very quickly um, is to welcome the university in Benin that we understand have signed today to be part of the UNIS Social Business Center uh, Alliance. We want to work with you. We invite you to get in touch with us so that we can share notes um, so that we begin to develop an African paradigm when it comes to the UNIS Social Business Center business, uh, social business in Africa. And finally, the old saying, who will guard the guards, which is pejorative, can be changed as well to become a little positive and say, who will thank those who thank others? Monica came up here and thanked all of us. I was one of those who were thanked. I want to thank you too. And I want to thank our organizing committee, Dr. Douglas Mundrenki, very, very active over the last two or so weeks, running around to get things moving together with Monica and Mabel. And I want to thank our administrators at the Catholic University, our finance department, because when it became, when we reached the stage where we had then to arrange for resources to be put to the venue and other needs that had been defined in the budget, they worked beyond the usual time. And I see um, Nozipo uh, is here um, and our Bresa, uh, Mrs. Nyamazana, and our registrar um, who ran around to make sure that all things were put in place uh, so that we were able to do these two days. Hello, Professor, are you still with us? Okay, is Harare still coming in? I think we lost her. We've lost our stream for Harare. Hopefully we'll get them back before we can finish the rest of uh, Professor Nyemba's uh, kind words.
If not, I can I can move on and we can circle back if that's okay, tech team. Yes, they're disconnected, so move on, please. No problem. So I think I will uh, just move on to our next uh, speaker. So next up, I'd like to invite Ms. Lamia Moshed, the Executive Director of Unis Center, to say a few words about the past two days and, and ways forward. So Lamia, over to you. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, good evening to everyone. And uh, I want to say that, uh, start again with what I said at the opening, which is that uh, we've coming together while around the world, the pandemic is still raging. There's still the surge in lockdowns going on and a lot of suffering in many countries. Um, and uh, we are finding that again to say that our health systems are not being able to cope and we're not being able to meet the economic needs of those who are affected. Uh, we have vaccines, uh, but we are not being able to provide those vaccines except in a very asymmetric way uh, with nearly all of them going to developed and uh, middle income countries and uh, very few. Uh, we heard in a pan healthcare panel that only 0.01% of those vaccines are coming uh, to Africa. Uh, so, you know, in this situation, what Professor Yunus is saying resonates more strongly than ever. He said that there is no scope for us uh, to go back to the old system because that system was failing us before and is failing us even more so uh, during the pandemic. He is saying that we must redesign systems and especially our economic systems. Um, but when we talk about redesigning systems and making changes uh, to bring zero wealth concentration for zero poverty or zero unemployment uh, and zero net carbon emissions, it feels like uh, very large goals and very overwhelming. Uh, it looks like grand actions that we cannot have any impact on as individuals. Uh, but Professor Yunus, even having, after having built very large institutions in his life, has said that there's no action that is too small or no person who is too small and that we should not wait for others as there is not time to do that. Uh, we should not wait for governments or companies or big institutions to try to do everything to tackle these pressing uh, issues that we face. Uh, there is a huge power of the individual uh, who is packed with endless creativity uh, which needs to be unleashed if we want to solve some of these problems in any meaningful kind of way. Uh, and as I said, we don't have any time. We must act now, all of us. It's, uh, this is at the root of the idea that uh, Professor Yunus presented at this conference of the three zero clubs uh, for youngsters to mobilize, to change the world. Every person, whether they're 12 or they're 35 or anything in between can already get acting to internalize the three zeros and start seeing how he or she can impact on this issue uh, in his or her everyday life. Uh, it was also the purpose of this forum, uh, the East Africa Social Business Forum for uh, Youth Entrepreneurship. Our purpose for this forum was to mobilize uh, young African entrepreneurs, young activists from Africa, to connect with each other, to, to learn from them, uh, and to see if they can work together with the practitioners of social business from Bangladesh and from around the world to find sustainable and scalable solutions to the problems that they care most about. We wanted to be able to provide the platform for those connections to be made. We had, uh, as you heard before, we had nine, nine panels and six wash, workshops. I was uh, very happy to attend every one of those and saw some really phenomenal speakers from a variety of uh, backgrounds uh, talking about the many programs and approaches that are already being taken uh, in Africa to tackle healthcare and economic challenges of the pandemic, how to unleash creativity, to solve problems around them, to solve uh, unemployment issues, climate issues, agriculture, and so on. We wanted to see if microfinance and social business, which we have uh, experience with, could be an important tool in this, and whether this could help in accelerating some of the actions that are already taking place. Uh, UNICENTER Center took the lead in this uh, uh, organizing this forum, but we would not have been able to do this without our partners who we invited to bring in their networks. And because we because of them, we were able to get so many of the uh, uh, brilliant speakers from Africa. And I want to mention, of course, the Catholic University of Zimbabwe, Grameen Creative Lab, UNICENTER Social Business, UNICENTER Environment Hub, Glasgow Caledonian University, UNICENTER Center, 
you know, social business, YY Foundation, YY Ventures, Oxfam, FAO, for bringing wonderful members of their network in Africa and beyond to organize and join the sessions. We had more than 100 speakers uh, from the, for, for this forum. Uh, we used a Zoom platform, uh, and with, even with the lim limitations, we had 1,150 registered participants from 72 countries uh, and 150 people in the parallel workshops. This was a phenomenal gathering. Uh, we, uh, as part of the Unison U Foundation project in uh, East Africa, are focusing on uh, the academic part. And uh, we made a lot of very good connections to African universities today uh, and yesterday. And we hope to build on those connections to take our project forward. Uh, we have uh, today announced, as uh, Professor Zinyemba mentioned, we signed uh, the YSBC with uh, Benin, making it the second YSBC uh, in the African continent. Uh, we are very delighted for the hard work that CUZ, as the first YSBC, put together to organize a physical event with 50 persons and staying throughout the forum, also organizing their own sessions and parallel workshops. Thank you very, uh, to the very distinguished speakers also for highlighting how important it, uh, it is for us to come together to network, accelerate our actions and give each other courage and inspiration through these very challenging times. This was very important part of this for us. I want to just end by thanking my colleagues at the Uno Center who work very hard behind the scenes uh, to thank the MCs who work very behind the scenes to make this successful to Professor Zinyemba, uh, Douglas and Monica from CUZ for making this a success for the behind the scenes uh, contributions also from YY Ventures in our communications part and also in providing the rapporteurs for this. Uh, I'd like to end with that and uh, say that uh, we look forward to seeing you all again in June for the social business day that will take place in Kampala and in November for the Global Social Business Summit organized with GCL and for the Social Business Academia Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lamia. And once again, I'd like to say thank you to the Unicenter team for all the hard work they've done behind the screens and behind the scenes to, to pull off this, this weekend. Um, up next, we have a really, really special video, um, video speech. Um, this is being provided by Dr. Jane Goodall. Um, she's the founder of the Goodall Institute, as well as a UN messenger of peace, and also one of my personal heroes. So um, I think tech team, if you have the video, it'd be great to see that. Hello, this is Jane Goodall. And first of all, I wish I could be um, live, but it didn't work out. And secondly, I'm really honored to have been asked to say a few words during this conference that celebrates the new UNAS Center East Africa Social Business Project. And some of you may be wondering why I've been asked to say a few words. I mean, I spent so many years studying chimpanzees, so if any of you know who I am, that's probably what you know. But the reason that I've been invited, there's, there's two reasons. First is because I initiated back in 1994 a project called Take Care, known as Takari, and it's the Jane Goodall Institute's method of community-based conservation total involvement of local communities in everything that we're trying to do. And this began when I was visiting various African countries to find out about the problems faced by chimpanzees, which I did. But at the same time, I learned about the problems faced by so many African communities in and around chimpanzee forest habitat, the poverty, the lack of good health and education, the degradation of the land. And it came to a head when I flew over the tiny Gombe National Park, Tanzania's smallest national park, where the chimpanzee research still continues to this day. Well, in 1960, when I began, it was part of the equatorial forest belt that stretched right across to West Africa. And when I flew over the park, in 1990 in a small plane, I was shocked to see, yes, I knew there was deforestation, but this was total. The park itself, 35 square kilometers, was just a little island of forest and all around were completely bare hills. Even the steep valleys, the trees had been fell, felled. 
and the people there were struggling to survive. The farmland was overused, human population had grown, uh, the, the deforestation on the steep valley slopes was leading to terrible erosion, people had lost their lives, the streams were silted up. And that's when I realised if we can't help the people find ways of making a living without destroying the environment, we can't try to save chimpanzees forests or anything else. So we started this program, which was launched in 1994 with a little grant from the European Union. And it was a tiny group of local Tanzanians who went into the 12 villages around Gombe and asked them, what do you think we can do to improve your lives? And what they wanted was growing more food, which meant restoring fertility to the overused farmland without chemicals. Uh, they wanted better education and health facilities. We worked with the local Tanzania authorities. We uh, improved schools, built new schoolrooms. Uh, we improved the clinics or very often had to start clinics. And gradually as the people came to trust us, we were able to introduce water management programs, a lot of uh, tree planting, reforestation. And then this is where uh, the UNIS Foundation comes in because back in 95, 1995, I met Mohamed Yunus at the State of the World Forum organized by President Gorbachev. And he invited me to Bangladesh, and that's where I learned about microfinance and the Grameen Bank. And I met women whose lives had been absolutely changed by the first time money was put in their hands for them to start their own small businesses. So I knew that this was what I needed to introduce into Takari. And we managed to set up eight microfinance banks where groups of women and a few men can apply for grants for their own environmentally sustainable small business projects and it's been incredibly successful almost always the money is paid back and the difference between a, a loan and a, and a donation and a, and a grant is that once the money is paid back and over 95% of money has been paid back and when it isn't paid back it's usually because there's been a death in one of the families but once it's paid back then there's a feeling of pride of ownership I did this and then they can apply for another grant if they so wish it's totally changed lives and our health program, because women now understand that they can plan out their families, we provided family planning information, and it's really empowered women, it's given them a voice, and some of their projects are so amazingly successful. So Takari, as it's called, is now present in other African countries and everywhere it's successful. And we've introduced into these villages now 104 in Tanzania throughout the chimpanzee range. We've introduced forest monitors. They are volunteers from the 104 villages who learn to use smartphones to monitor the health of their village forest reserves. And they're proud of this work. And all of the people now understand that protecting the environment isn't just about protecting wildlife, it's about their own future. And we need the forests. We need the forests because they provide so-called services, but they provide clean water and air. They help to regulate the temperature and the rainfall. So Takari is a big success and we're getting ready to ramp it up across Africa. It's changing lives, starting small businesses, encouraging entrepreneurship. And then the second reason I think I was invited was because back in 1991, I started a project for young people. And 
I was meeting young people all around the world who seemed to have lost hope, who said, well, you've compromised our future. There's nothing we can do about it. That's not true. Yes, we've compromised your future, no doubt about that. But there is something that can be done about it, which I think all you young entrepreneurs know only too well, and that's why this new UNIS project is so important. But Roots and Shoots began in Tanzania with 12 high school students who were concerned about environmental and social issues around them. And I told them, gather up your friends who also are concerned. And we talked about these problems. And we decided the most important message, and I want to share that with all of you, is that every single one of us makes an impact on the planet every single day. And we can choose what sort of impact we make. And we also decided, because in the rainforest, all those years I spent in the rainforest in Gombe, I learned about the interconnection of all living things, how one small species may seem insignificant if it becomes extinct, but maybe it was the main food of another species, and so on. And you get a ripple effect, and in the end, that can lead to ecosystem collapse. We are part of the natural world, not separated from it. We need the natural world for our future. So anyway, we decided every Roots and Shoots group would choose themselves three different projects, one to help people, one to help animals, one to help the environment. So what began with these 12 high school students is now involving young people in kindergarten, university, uh, young entrepreneurs and other youth who are out in the big wide world having left school or university. It's in uh, 68 countries and growing. It's spread through most of East Africa and it's changing lives. I think it's so successful because young people get to choose and then they see the impact that what they do with their group, whether it's clearing litter, planting trees, uh, growing organic food, starting small businesses, whatever it is, um, it's, it's happening all over the world. And so there's the hope. I'm changing things where I am. Other people are changing things where they are, and this is affecting the planet. So Roots and Shoots, quite honestly, is changing the world, even as I speak to you. And I'll bet there's some of you attending this event who have been part of Roots and Shoots. I don't know, but it's, it's a guess because so many people have. So, you know, there are three big problems that we have to overcome. First of all, we have to stamp out corruption. Secondly, we have to stop thinking that we can have unlimited economic development on a planet with finite natural resources, because already in some areas we're using those resources up faster than Mother Nature can replenish them. And then we must reduce the unsustainable environmental footsteps of so many people who, who have money and shouldn't live that way. That means we must we must eradicate or at least alleviate poverty because when you're really poor you're going to cut down the last trees in your desperate effort to, to grow food for your family or fish the last fish for the same reason or if you're in an urban area you're going to buy the cheapest food you can't afford to ask where did it come from how was it made did it harm the environment was it cruel to animals is it cheap because of slave labor in some other countries you have to make do with the cheapest in order to survive. So I'm really excited to see how this, this project develops and I wish it all success. And I hope that all of you who've been part of this event will leave inspired, encouraged, and ready to do your bit to make this a better world. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Amazing. Wow. What an incredible, incredible video message. Um, I think uh, all we have to do is to invite um, for the closing remarks. 
the person who brought us all here, his commitment and his drive and his vision for social business all these years ago have brought us to where we are today and continue to drive this mission forward. So my great honor, my great pleasure to introduce Professor Mohammed Yunus, Nobel Laureate, um, to give us these closing remarks for the last two days. Thank you so much and over to you, Professor. Thank you, Dan, <clears throat> wonderful. Well, let's uh, come to a conclusion. We have a long day, um, with lots of uh, things to share. But uh, I felt very excited, uh, very energized, because when uh, we are planning for it, uh, when we are actually starting this uh, forum, uh, we uh, kind of reached uh, the limits of our uh, frustrations uh, about the way the world is running around us. Uh, first, the vaccine was very, very frustrating thing that we have been uh, fighting about. And then it's, it gets worse every day, the uh, vaccine situation. And the whole um, uh, system of uh, uh, political system collapsed, really. The global system collapsed. And we don't know where to look at. Uh, United Nations, who should have been uh, taking a lead role in it, it's bringing all the people together, all the nations together, uh, to come with a common policy for production. This is their responsibility, global responsibility to take the decisions, how the productions will be taking place. All these issues, the patent and all this, all disappear once you decide that this is how the production will be taking place. Just like any, any uh, uh, family who would like to protect their family members. So you decide this is the way everybody will be given assignment, how much they will produce and how it will be done. It's a wartime preparation. Uh, in wartime preparation, you don't uh, talk about uh, uh, the, one, uh, the one CEO is not agreeable or something like that, or uh, shareholders are making fuzz about it. Uh, this is not a question of shareholders fuzz. It's about uh, saving the planet, saving peoples on this planet and so on. So that's very frustrating, it's very aggravating. It's, it's, we were um, day by day as, as, as things happen. It's uh, something uh, very depressing. So uh, when we began the forum, uh, it was at that uh, peak of that de depression and aggravation that we had uh, been suffering through. Uh, and then the forum came as a kind of family gathering, as I was saying, that uh, to give us encouragement and uh, at the time of crisis. Uh, so it's the worst of the time, as you can look at it. Uh, in the totality of it, uh, you can only describe it as a worst of the time. Uh, worst of the time now with the encouragement, with the inspiration from the family members that we gathered today, uh, we want to turn it around as the best of the time. This is what the uh, inspiration is all about. Uh, worst of the time to be turned into uh, best of the time. And this is what we have been discussing, how the best of the time is possible. So the whole uh, world has to be reshaped in, in a direction that we want to go. That's where the idea of three zeros and everything that we are discussing, social business we are discussing. And this is the direction that we want to go, how we make that happen. In the, and we bring all our friends together. So today I'm happy that uh, friends give us a little bit of, uh, uh, make me easy to breathe. Uh, at least uh, we can have some hope now. We can move together, move forward, uh, how to uh, do in the direction that we want to go, despite what happens in the world. We still take uh, charge and make this happen. And at the same time, uh, the point that I feel that is urgency of the situation. It's not just the deal tomorrow, which can be done today. Uh, it has to be done today. This, this is the today situation. How do we do it today? Uh, mobilize everybody to make it feel that this is our task. We must do that. And that's where uh, we uh, mobilization part comes for all of us. All the ideas, all the things that we heard. Uh, it's enormous mobilization, mobilization of minds. Uh, this is this is where we went wrong in the minds, and that's where our universities come uh, to the shapers of the minds, and that's this responsibility of the social business centers is the responsibility of giving the shape to our minds. What 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 the young people should be looking at, and this is uh, that's why the more we can energize the university community, uh, academic community to reshape the minds of the young people so that you can move in the direction. Uh, we will not be able to do the, everything 100% turn around, 
but we can make the turnaround beginning. This is this is what we are looking for. A turnaround to make a beginning, take the first step to happen. And the fact that we hold this uh, uh, forum in East Africa uh, is very significant for us that we want to do it because today we have discussed that uh, idea about why uh, Africa is so important for all of, for the whole world. It's, uh, uh, as Africa uh, is the place where uh, young people uh, would be the one who would be taking the lead in the entire world. Uh, when you mentioned that 35 percent, uh, 75 percent uh, of the population under 35, it's amazing strength. 75 percent of the population under 35. You can change the whole world with this power that we have in this uh, uh, power of young, young people. So that's the mobilization of the young people. And that's where uh, uh, all the discussions we are having and also the title that we put to the name of the uh, titling of the forum itself for youth entrepreneurship. And again, uh, having it in Africa, entrepreneurship is not so natural to Africa. And that's what I was remembering, saying that this is our birthplace. This is where we are born. And as we are born, uh, we came out with the gene of entrepreneurship. And that's what Africa gave it to us uh, as, as we grew up uh, as a human being on the continent of Africa. And it, we continued for that thousands of years developing that, uh, uh, refining that entrepreneurship until uh, we left the continent only a few years back, a few thousand years back when we are a million year, a couple of million years in Africa. And then only recently uh, in that global scale, we came out. So the gene of entrepreneurship is built in, it's embedded in all human beings. This is what we are. This is our nature of human being. When people challenge that, uh, not everybody is an entrepreneur. Uh, I have to uh, repeatedly mention that our gene has not disappeared. It's there. Simply, it has been suppressed by the new ideas that have been implanted in our mind uh, to suppress that entrepreneurship. So youth and entrepreneurship can change the whole world. This is our chance. This is what we want to do. And leadership of the uh, young, of the African young, young people would be the one the uh, whole world would be looking for. This is the direction that we want to go. We want to make sure that we uh, achieve the goal with the leadership of the young people. So our whole focus is the young people. Our whole focus is entrepreneurship. And I'm very happy here in all the um, uh, recollections, all the reporting that you have made during this uh, uh, conference, in this forum, about what is happening in, the, in our uh, entrepreneurship level, what's happening in the social business level. And these are the ideas which are forgotten. Now we have to revive it, shape it, and put it into action. And lots of things have happened. This is the, another part of uh, a depressing part of it that I want to remind you. Lots of things have happened, uh, recognized and appreciated, uh, but ignored. Uh, and when you we are talking about the microfinance, microcredit programs, how wonderful this microcredit, microfinance program has been doing all over the world. And uh, there are reports coming from all over the uh, different countries, uh, successes of the microcredit programs, how they have done. And of course, uh, Bangladesh, India, and all other places. Uh, while you're appreciating uh, not a single government so far uh, to, uh, has, has invited, they have invited me to honor me and so on. Nobody ever said, why didn't you help us set up a Grameen Bank in our country? If that country, that, uh, that uh, bank has gained, uh, achieved uh, the glory of having a Nobel Peace Prize, it's worth be putting attention to. And it still, it puzzles me. Not a single government in the world, not a single government in the world, has invited me and mentioned to me, wrote to me, called me up, that please help us to set up a Grameen Bank in our country. What's wrong? What, what is it that we don't do, uh, don't understand? Uh, and and uh, if you say that oh, it, it, it can be done anywhere in the world, that we have demonstrated one after another in a very concrete way today during the uh, microfinance uh, session, we have been, uh, we have, receiving reports from so many organizations, particularly one from Andreas Young, 
uh, who is running the program in the United States, uh, how beautifully she's running the program, even under pandemic situation in the United States, where everything is collapsing, uh, her program is flourishing, continuing, and so on. And, uh, but I don't think any government has asked her, or the US government has asked her any question yet, or the uh, founder yet. And she said all the reports, all the research report that's been done on that. So that's very puzzling to me. Oh, is it something uh, uh, something to be distanced from that uh, you honor him, you give him uh, some uh, uh, prizes and so on, but don't get involved with this work. Uh, this is dangerous thing. Uh, are we that dangerous that uh, nobody has to pay attention to us? Simply saying that advise us to create a microcredit bank. Just advise, uh, uh, not even running. If you want us to run it, create it, and we will be happy to do that. And this is what we have done with the invitation of NGOs, with the invitation of foundations. That's what we spread all over the world, that uh, they invited us and we helped them. It's their microcredit program, but we sent our staff to help them to set it up and so run it and grow it and expand it, but not a single government. Now, about the when we talk about the uh, youth entrepreneurship, People say, let's laugh, but no, 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 they will go for the job because that's one immediate thing they are, uh, they are looking for. And we said, this is not true. It's an example that we have created in Bangladesh with the microfinance and everybody said they will never, never be able to use it money, never be able to pay back the money. Even if she pay, pay back, paid back the first time, she will not pay back the next time. All kinds of things they speculated, everything proven wrong. And same thing for youth entrepreneurship. What we have done, we created an equity fund, a venture capital fund, investing in young people who want to have an uh, have a business running for the first time in his life, in her life, that she wants to start a business. And we build it trusted as we trusted the uh, Grameen borrowers uh, out of nowhere with no position whatsoever, no collateral. And same thing with uh, the young people. Uh, they said, we have, this is the idea, this is the, my business plan. Even that business plan is not well written. She, he doesn't know how to write this. We helped him develop a business plan. And our own people helping a young person who has no idea how to run a business, helping him to think about the business and have a business drawn up. And we become an investor in that business. We become a partner. And then he goes wholeheartedly to run that business and gradually return the money that we gave her, gave him or gave her, and become the full owner. Because initially we were the 90% uh, owner of the business because he may, may have given 10%. 10% he didn't give or she didn't give any um, in monetary terms, simply the space uh, in, her, in his house or her house where she was working, we monetized it. Okay, this is your investment. This is what you do. And whatever service is providing, this is monetized. This is this is your business, okay? And gradually, he pays back all the money, uh, returns the money, uh, all the shares that we want, becomes a full owner. Then he or she wants the second round of business, second round of money investment, and we happily give them the second round of investment and the third round of investment. Now they are working, and they are pay, putting back the money that we did, uh, every single penny of that. And we have done it over 70,000 young people. Every day it's happening, it's expanding, and we keep on pushing, pu putting money and the money keeps coming back again and we recycle the money. Not a single government yet had asked us. In, NGOs have asked us, foundation have asked us. We have started in Kosovo doing, replicating that the young entrepreneur program or a young equity program, uh, the uh, new entrepreneur equity program. We are doing it uh, uh, in response to NGOs, in response to foundations, but not a single government. They talk about youth entrepreneurship. They talk about uh, uh, unemployment, how terrible the unemployment. We're not talking about uh, a huge sum of money to be paid to us. We're not saying it. this is their money. We're just simply using the money to do the thing. And even government doesn't have to pay, pay the money for doing this. All the government has to do is to connect us with a, with a bank that they, here's the money, if you can use it. Uh, use it and uh, government will be standing guarantee for that. And try it out in a small way how it works. If you're feeling good enough and you can extend this uh, facility more and more so that more people can come. But still not a government has shown any interest whatsoever 
after all these years of work that is going on. This is a very puzzling thing. Something went wrong in our head since uh, uh, we adopted this idea of uh, uh, job. Job has completely distorted our thinking process. We cannot discover the original human being that we were when we left Africa, uh, the way our gene was developed as a, uh, for the entrepreneurship, which we are holding on. And uh, luckily, all these women in microcredit program demonstrated that it still is there, it's alive and kicking and very, very fresh in their mind. And they have demonstrated it. It's not something that we are putting words uh, uh, ideas and thinking, uh, which doesn't uh, 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 kind of check out with the reality. It checks out with the reality. Millions of women, millions of people taking microcredit, becoming entrepreneurs and so on. So what is the doubt about the uh, so, uh, entrepreneurship? I, uh, it puzzles me. So we have to work on the mind issues. The mind issue is the most important thing. Uh, it's uh, everything that we have done, all the damages that we have done, is because the damages we have done to our thinking process. So we have to freshen up and it's very difficult to change the minds of the older people because they're so solidified into their brain. Uh, young people are still fresh. They may still have the entrepreneurship coming up, given an opportunity. So this is what the, our task is. We have to do that. That's why uh, this, uh, this getting together, the family members kind of uh, re-energize re us to get the things un, in, un, un, uncompleted thing to be completed. This has to be completed. Set the process in the motion. This is the most important. They set the process in the motion. So we'd be very happy uh, working with the young people in Africa. Uh, this, is a, this is a great uh, future that uh, we have to build together. This is where we're looking for. So the whole conference today, uh, that two days, is something that is the message that is brought. It can be done. Somebody has to stand up and get it done. And we are the one volunteer ourselves to get it done. So I'm very happy to have you uh, uh, together with all the friends together. Let's make, make it happen. And uh, while I conclude, I want to thank uh, all the speakers who spoke uh, on, in this uh, marathon sessions after sessions and so on. Uh, wonderful uh, deliberations. Uh, it's a very significant contributions made by everybody and all the people who are behind it, all the, uh, organize it with the uh, UNIS Social Business, with GCL and YSB and uh, UNIS Sports Hub and uh, UNIS Environment Hub and everybody. Uh, uh, and particularly, I'll be thanking uh, uh, Catholic University of Zimbabwe. It's a wonderful thing that you have done. Let's give a big applause for University uh, Catholic University of Z Zimbabwe for, for the wonderful role they have played. Give it really, really made it a physical one. Uh, it's not a, a half wheel done. It's a real physical one. They carried out the full program as a physical one. We, you inspire us. We can get anything done with that kind of inspiration behind us. So we want to thank and all the people at the UNIS Center and the, uh, those who are working very hard to make this possible as a virtual program and uh, Lamia and her team. And uh, let's give them a big applause, uh, wonderful work that they have done. And also uh, our tech team, uh, we were worrying that something will go wrong, uh, will collapse, the whole system collapse. It didn't collapse. And uh, I'm the last speaker, so I can guarantee you that it didn't collapse. So we were here and it's wonderful that uh, to get you together, let's say, have, let's keep energizing each other because it, things are getting depressing and aggravating every day. Uh, let's, within that, we have to build the, uh, during the worst of the days, let's commit ourselves to make the best of the days, uh, best of our life. This will be during this time. And this is a commitment we want to keep. And thank you very much for uh, this forum and everybody who is behind it. Thanks a lot. Good night. Thank you very much, Professor. And thank you again, everybody, for the last two days. I think with those incredible closing words and those and all that advice, we have a way forward and look to the next 100 days and to the next time we can all be together and share what we did and what we took from this from this uh, weekend. And so, we should thank Aziz particularly because of the Of course, tech yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Aziz.
Yeah. Aziz and Sadia uh, yeah, behind so the screen. Sadia, everybody behind yeah, everybody's behind Yeah, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Really, really impressive. And again, the whole team at in Harare as well, putting it yes, together. Yes, in Harare, in definitely. Definitely. Thank you. So thank you so much and, and, and be safe, everybody. All the best. Thank you. Okay.